This is Rob Tubman for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined as always by Frank Warren. We're here in Las Vegas at the Tyson Fury Tom Schwartz final press conference. How are you doing Frank? I'm doing good. Yourself? I'm doing very well. Thank you very well. Looking very dapper today. Thank you. Not look bad yourself. I do, but thanks for lying, or is very kind of you. Um, let's talk about that press conference. Tyson Fury takes over Las Vegas. He well, certainly does, doesn't he? You know, he, he was calling us to the stage to get on with it. I mean, it's amazing. When you think most uh, fighters don't want to know anything about uh, doing a press conference, and it's Tyson, he's out there doing his best, as always, to sell the show. He's just a natural. It reminds me, there's that scene in that great movie, When We Were Kings, with uh, Muhammad Ali, and he was talking to all the press for ages, because he was so accessible, and then he left and then suddenly comes back again to carry it on, and it's just like Tyson. How easy does it make your job as a promoter when you've got somebody like that who is so, I don't want to say in love with the lime, like that's probably not the right word, but so open and so easy to, to kind of sell himself and sell the fight? Well, he's that, but he's also, at the moment, he's in a good place. You know, he's had a lot of problems in the past. Uh, some of us here, I've you know, said before, they were self-inflicted. Some were, some weren't, and he's, at the moment, no, he's in a fantastic place. So physically and mentally, he, he, you know, I don't believe he can get any better. So that's where he's at, and uh, I'm delighted with that for him because it's, uh, you know, he's, he's well out of that, that, that terrible place and dark place he was eight, uh, 18 months ago to where he is today, and he's enjoying himself, and he's enjoying life, and he's enjoying the sport. How difficult of an opponent is Tom Schwartz? Tyson is somebody who has kind of risen to the occasion when he's fought the best fighters. You talk about your Vladimir Klitschko's, your Deontay Wilders. Some of his, say, weaker performances have come against your John McDermott, so Steve Cunningham, etc. in fights where he wasn't quite as motivated by his own accord. How difficult is this fight for Tyson? Well, you know, Tom Schwartz is a big guy. I mean, there's not a lot in their size. He's a big, big fella. He's been serious training. He's not done any press conferences. They didn't come to any of the press conferences. He wouldn't leave his training camp. So he's trained and uh, you, you only got to look at him, you can see how fit and well he is. Um, I, I expect him to give a really good account of himself. I just feel that Tyson's, I think he's an elite fighter. You know, he's got great, but he's got a great boxing brain, he's got fast hands, and it's going to take somebody extra special to beat him. And I, I'm, you know, I believe this guy will give a good account of himself. Um, and anything can happen in boxing. We see it a few weeks ago. You know, one punch can turn it all around. But I think Tyson at the moment is in, is you know he's been just been made the number one heavyweight in the world by the Ring magazine, and that's where he's at, and that's where he feels he's at. He feel, you know he's the lineal champion. He should really be the WBC champion. I think he won that fight. He didn't get the decision. But in respect to that, he's in a good place, and every fight is a potential banana skin now until he gets gets back into fighting for his belts. Now you mentioned that Tyson being an elite fighter, um, it's hard to say about Tom Schwartz because he really hasn't fought anywhere near that kind of level. But with that being said, how important is it for Tyson? I mean, it's his not American debut, but it's his, it's his Las Vegas debut on ESPN, top rank, his first fight of that deal. How important is it for him to not only win, but win well on Saturday night? Well, he's got to give a good account of himself, obviously. You know, this is a big platform he's got here. He's trained hard. The difference between his last fight, where he was training to make the weight, He's now training for a fight. The weight's off. So he's not had to go through all that, you know, where your body, as, as Ben said at the press conference, where the, his trainer said, you know, where you've got to, when you're training, it's to, it's to um, you know, you're to recover from the weight you lost, you know, the draining effects. Now he's on, he's, you know, he's got a good fight and weight he's at. He's managed to maintain that. He's been in training since the Wilder fight. So he's in a really good place. So I, I, I think we're going to get a, good, a really good performance out of him. We mentioned Deontay Wilder. Um, I spoke to Shelley Finkel last week. We've seen the announcements of, of a two-fight deal for next year. Just tell me a little bit about how that was made and how that came to pass. What, the two-fight deal with uh, what was Showtime? No, so Wilder, the, the, the reported deal for Tyson to rematch Deontay next year and a third fight potentially on the table. You know, there's no, no uh, th th we want the fight to happen, but no terms have agreed for Tyson. Yeah, he wants to fight. Of course he wants to fight. We want it to happen. But the terms have got to be discussed for Tyson, and uh, no one, and he, he doesn't want to do that, nor should he, before the fight takes place um, on Saturday. Once that's out of the way, then we can get down to the nitty gritty. So the terms haven't been discussed. What do you have? Do you have a verbal agreement? Shelley told me that the fight was was going to be made for next yeah, year. You have we a verbal all agreement? want it. We all want the fight to happen. You know, we, it, we made no secret of that we tried to make it earlier, but this this uh, deal came up with. ESPN, which was a great deal for him, which uh, helps with his exposure and building his brand in the States, giving him a, a big platform to work on. Uh, you know, and, and also the fact that Deontay has got a fight lined up, his final tee. So next year, hopefully we get it on the, you know, the, the first quarter of next year. 
You mentioned the deal with ESPN. Um, how much involvement do you have with, with this show? I know you obviously promote Tyson and look after his interest in the UK, as Bob told me. How much do you have to do with this show in general we, overall? We, we're, we're joint promoters. That's what we are. We're joint promoters of, of Tyson Fury. What do you make of the undercard? The undercard has attracted a little bit of criticism. We've got Jesse Hart, that's Sullivan Barrera. There's obviously Michaela Meyer in action. But I think the general feeling among some boxing fans is a little bit thin on the ground with regards to the undercard. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> it's not my show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, did, I didn't make the undercard. Obviously, they're all... They're all, you know, they're all um, I, I don't know. I hope they don't. I hope everybody be entertained. I'm, I'm told that the, the ladies' fight's going to be a really good fight and there's, and there's exposure for some of these uh, you know, good... good good young heavyweights who are coming through we'll see, see what happens but, um, with the, the main event is what it is it's, uh, it's uh, Tyson on his continuing continuing his journey against a, a guy who's ranked number two in the world who's ranked, who's ranked in the governing body's rankings above Ruiz nicely negotiated Frank You've mentioned Anthony Ruiz, you've mentioned Anthony Joshua. I've not caught up with you since that fight. Um, I know you've spoken about it to death, the actual fight, but in correlation to this fight, people always say it's heavyweight boxing, it can happen, upsets do happen. We've seen it as recently as a couple of weeks ago. Has that, do you feel, raised the level of concentration that Tyson needs to have to ensure that doesn't happen again? Do you think that will laser him in? Of course he does. He's got to be really focused. This is going to be. This is no foregone conclusion, as you say. Anything can happen, especially with these big guys. And there have been a lot of upsets in boxing over the last 18 months or so. I mean, no big odds-on favourites getting beaten. That's what boxing is. That's the drama of boxing. Anything can happen. Who knows this guy? You know, I don't know how good this fella is. I'm not seeing him in with a, with a fighter as good as Tyson Fury. Who knows? He may rise to the occasion. But he's never been in with anybody as good as Tyson Fury. And he may not, I don't know. But he, at the end of the day, it's uh, this, this is all I'm focused on. And Tyson is he's getting through this fight, making his debut on ESPN, and then moving to the next level. And that's, fingers crossed, that providing there's no upsets, that's what will happen. What would be a bigger shock? Andy Ruiz beating Anthony Joshua or Tom Schwartz beating Tyson Fury? I think they're a bit, but a bit of both, really, to be, be honest, if that was to happen. Sitting on the fence? <laughs> Not at all. I mean, you know, I think for Tyson to get beat by, by Thomas Schwartz would, would be surprising. But he's an undefeated fighter. It would be surprising. But Anthony Joshua, you know, I mean, he's not taking this fight at five weeks' notice. You know, um, and I'm not being disrespectful to Andy Ruiz, who doesn't look like an athlete, although he's, you know, he, he boxed extremely well, showed a big heart. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a t you know, it's a, uh, anything can happen. I keep saying it, anything can happen in boxing, but I think Tyson is 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 an, an elite elite heavyweight, and he's not been made number one heavyweight in the world by Ring Magazine for nothing. Now you mentioned um, we mentioned earlier on in the interview about the Wilder fight being kind of verbally agreed. You both want the fights. If a situation were to occur where the Andy Ruiz fight became available, should he get past the Anthony Joshua rematch? If that is indeed to take place. Would either yourself or, or potentially Wilder's team be interested in, in facing Andy Ruiz instead of making that rematch? Andy, Andy Ruiz has replaced Anthony Joshua, and he's got his seat at the table now. On merit, you know, he done a he done a job in New York, so he's there. He's holding belts. Deontay Wilder holds a belt. You know, they're they're they're, they're there on merit, and Tyson's the lineal champion. They're the three guys. Anthony Joshua's got to fight his way back into that to get his seat back at that table. I know you're not obviously involved in it. Um, do you believe that the Joshua Ruiz rematch happens next? I don't know what they, where their mindset is. You know, there's a lot of school of thought that um, that Anthony Joshua should take his time, take a bit of time out, and then maybe regroup, look at what's going on in his team, which I'm sure he's doing anyway. And then maybe, uh, maybe take a couple of fights to get his confidence back. I don't know. Maybe he's got the confidence to go straight in for a rematch. That's going to be his choice. But he can be, when he does fight Ruiz, Ruiz is not going to be getting just five weeks' notice. He's going to be in a camp. I mean, I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference to how he physically looks. But mentally, it's going to add more strength to what he already knows, that he has the, the punch power to, to hurt Anthony Joshua. And we've obviously spoken at great length, everybody, about what was considered to be the top three heavyweights in the world in Wilder, Joshua and Fury. Now Joshua has been defeated by Ruiz. Would that make any kind of potential Fury Joshua? We've obviously seen the Joshua Wilder negotiations drag on. Does that make it more complicated? Does it make it easier to make those fights? Yeah, you know, who knows? I mean, 
at the moment, it's, it's amazing how, you know, how, what can happen in one fight and, and what it, how it can change a situation. It certainly won't be a 50-50 deal now, would it? You know, Tyson would be getting the lion's share because he brings more to the table than Anthony Joshua at the moment, if that fight were to happen. Moving away from this Saturday, you've also got another show on this Saturday. I was very surprised to see you here. Um, Josh Warrington defends his IBF World Featherweight title against Kid Galhad. Got a bit spicy at the press conference. I think that's today because we're eight hours ahead. Um, well, eight hours behind, I don't know, jet lag. Um, just break down that fight for me. Well, it's a cracking fight, isn't it? It's a fight that was ordered by the IBF. Uh, Galahad is the uh, mandatory. Got there by, um, got there by winning an eliminator. He's undefeated. He's a, an awkward customer, and uh, and he's got a lot of belief. Josh, I think, is, is is an amazing fighter. All what he's done in the last, certainly in the last, was it 12, 15 months, has been amazing. He's gone into two fights against world-class fighters. One fighter in Selby, who a lot of people felt was the best pound-for-pound -pound British fighter, and done a job on him. I mean, done a complete job on him. Took him to school, beat him in every department, outboxed him. Out punched him, out gamed him, and then he went in with Carl Frampton, and, and with Carl, who's a quality operator, um, basically his tactics again, um, just took the fight over. And Carl himself said, you know, he never managed to get, you know, because he, of, of, of the way the fight panned out, he couldn't get into it. And he said that um, he was a he was a, probably the best fighter that he's fought, which is a bit of an accolade. So how does the fight pan out? Everybody keeps talking about what. You know, our awkward um, Galahad's going to be for, for, for Josh. I think people should, if I was um, Galahad, I'd be looking and thinking how awkward Josh's style is going to be for him. He ain't coming to make up the numbers. It's the first time I think he's gone into a fight as a favourite. Um, but he's, he's on a high at the moment and he, he is, he's strong in every department. He's got a good chin. He can box, he can punch, he's got a tremendous work rate. Um, he's really up and fired up for this fight. I just stepped on my next question. I was about to say, Josh Warrington going into his fights with Lee Selby and Carl Frampton, arguably a bigger underdog against Carl Frampton. How do you think the dynamic will shift now, the fact that he's considered by many to be quite a significant favourite against Kid Galahad in this fight? Well, I don't think he pays too much attention. I think, you know, his dad, Sean, who's done a tremendous job training him, you know, really underrated and done a great job with him. I think that um, they work on their tactics. They've got their tactics spot on. Well, they've got their tactics right for all their fights. He's undefeated, but certainly for his last two big fights against world-class operators, against world-class operators, um, they've worked, looked, at, looked at this, and I've been talking to Sean quite a few times, uh, and you know, they're, they're very, very confident. We've touched upon Carl Frampton, obviously fighting Josh Warrington. I caught up with Carl in New York. He was actually running around as part of the media. Did a very, very good job, might I add. Um, he's talking about, obviously, he's going to return to the ring, I think, in September, he was saying, with a view to fighting Oscar Valdez. Um, is that fight something? I mean, I know you've spoken to Bob at great length about that fight in the past. Is that fight we can expect to see later on this year? You know, he'll fight. Uh, uh, he's had the problem. This court case has been put back, so depending on how it impacts, I'm sure he'll fight um, in the next few months. Get, get you know get a comeback fight and then uh, the, the Valdez fight. Um, that's what 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 the plan is, and then hopefully the winner of that will fight Josh. If providing all these guys keep winning. Moving away from this Saturday, we're still waiting for an announcement on Anthony Yard versus Sergei Kovalev. Frank, what can you tell me? We got meetings out here. You know, we certainly nothing to do with us. The reason it's not been announced, we've done everything, signed the contracts, and uh, for various reasons the Russians didn't announce it. So the contracts have been signed, but the fight's not been announced. Yeah, obviously it's not been announced because you've not heard anything. You know, that we signed signed it, and uh, we're well, anyway. We've got we've got a meeting out with them. I think they're coming in tomorrow, so we're having a chat tomorrow about it. When I spoke to Bob the other day, he said that he's been kind of enlisted as a mediator by Kathy Duva. Um, what seems to be the hold-up in that regard? I know Tundi Ajayi was on Twitter talking about VADA testing. Is that something that's potentially hold-up? So Sergei Kovalev's got his outstanding court case. Uh, I, he didn't. Both fighters had to enrol in VADA. Um, Anthony en enrolled immediately. Um, Kovalev didn't. Um, we had to be given letters of in invitation to get our, obtain our visas from the Russian embassy. We never ever got the letters. Um, the ball is firmly in the in the uh, court of the the Russians 
as to why this hasn't happened. So we're going to we're going to um, try and sort this out, as I say, before the end of the weekend. And one way or another, we will then make you know we'll make an announcement where we are. But um, Anthony Yard wants this fight. That's why he signed for it. It's not a problem at Aaron. We have complied with every detail of the contract. I mean, not to be a pessimist, but I mean, the the, the date that was rumoured would have been the 29th for this month. That's not happening. Well, it's too late for that to happen now. Can't on out. We've not even got visas. He hadn't enrolled in Varda, so it has, how can it happen? It's not going to happen. Varda testing would also mean sort of a 14-week testing window as well. So we're we looking at that kind of delay. I don't know because we want to get it on, and he can he can be tested. He should be tested now. He should be enrolled. Hopefully, he is. You know, this is quite. I'm trying to be. I'm I'm being very restrained in what I'm saying at the moment. But obviously, come the weekend, one way or another, it, you know, it all will come out. Could you see a situation with Anthony Yard boxing for a vacant title in that case? If he does, he does. He's not backing off. He is, he is the number one, and that's, that's where we're at. Just lastly, because I know there's a room full of busy people who would love to grab your ear, um, Tyson Fury came out and said some interesting things to the man just sat down there about the WBO title potentially being on the line this weekend. Is that Tyson being Tyson? He's playing with you. No chance of that happening? No. Not unless Andy Ruiz vacates it. If he does, then obviously, but he's not vacated. OK, well, Frank Warren, always a pleasure catching up with you. Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers, Rob. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Frank. Lovely.